Hola familia, welcome to my channel Mika Creates. I'm Mika. Thanks for stopping by and hanging out with me today. Today I have a wonderful mukbang for you. And basically what a mukbang is, it's an eating show. And I actually have a chow chat because I have a topic. And uh, my topic is pinch. And I'm going to tell you all about pinch and who pinch is. But, <clears throat> so let me tell you what I got going on up in here, up in here. So I have a sea a pasta, seafood pasta. And if you want the recipe, uh, I have made a video with this recipe. So I have some wonderfully beautiful scrimps. I think it's like 13 by the 13 and by 15, 13 to 15. So they're the big ones. And I have some mussels and I have some linguine. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, I have some Parmesan cheese. I don't have fresh Parmesan, but you probably have this in your home, so you can add some or not. It's up to you. And I've got some Pepsi on deck. I am going to add a little bit just to see how I like the way it tastes. So I made it in my, in my paella pan. I love this paella pan. This is super thin at the bottom. So let's try it. Thank you, Lord, for my food and my job that I'm able to have this. So good to me. That's a lot. That's a lot right there. How's everybody doing? Mmm. Mm. Mm -hmm. I brought some pepper. I wanted to add some pepper. It's a little bit of pepper. For my taste, I need a little bit more salt. That was probably a lot for you guys, but I don't necessarily know if I like it with the Parmesan cheese. Mmm. We don't need Parmesan cheese. Mm mm. You can if you want to, but not me. So what's going on with my hair? Mm. Where are my manners? Um, I typically don't take a shower I typically I never wash my hair at night because I have a hard time sleeping with my hair wet I have a lot of hair I know it's long even though I cut about four inches off Mm. Mm. The shell is everything, you guys. You guys have to peel it and suck the shell. So much flavor in there. Just really quick, I added a little bit of cayenne just to give it a little nice flair. It's not hot or spicy. Kind of gives you a little tiny bite. Anyway, so yesterday when I got home, I was so tired, but we were really sweaty, or I was really sweaty, so I had no choice but to take a shower at night and wash my hair because it was, it was not okay. So I didn't put any products in it. 
I didn't straighten it. I put it in a bun so I can go to sleep. Mmm. 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 Okay, that's crazy. The mussels go so well with this dish. You guys know that I don't use any alcohol, but typically you can put some wine in here, some white wine, but I didn't do that today. Everything that I cook is non-alcoholic and is delicioso. I'm telling you to try this recipe. Try me. I dare you. So good. Muscle. Good. Mm-hmm. It does, you're right, it gives it a creamy texture. I almost ate the... Uh-huh. You can taste the kayak too. Mmm. You had a piece of garlic in there? I'll tell you what. I'm trying to get this little corner here. And there's all these beautiful little things at the bottom. See, like I've got some green onions in this bite and some garlic. Mmm. Oh, my hands there. Look at that. You see that? The roasted garlic, onions. So I didn't do anything in my hair, so. I had to put it up. Otherwise I'd look like a little cave woman. I wanted to spare you of that. You're welcome. <laughs> mm. So in today's Chow Chap, and if you're new to my channel, Chow Chap is a video that I do. Where you and I conversate we chat over chow, over food. And this is linear. It's like dinner and lunch. Is that how you say it? I don't know. So my topic for today is the true love of my life. Truly. This man has my heart. Pinch. Pinch is my little soulmate. He's a four legged brown chihuahua. I don't have dogs in my house, they're my babies. And I'll tell you that I have been sober for 11 years. And I have had pinch longer than that. That boy has seen me at my worst. 
And not my brow. So I got pinned. My best friend got married. I moved to Colorado. I'm sorry you guys, but the seasoning is all right. Mm. It's so good. I know I wouldn't do this in a restaurant, but it's just me and you. I hope I'm not being judged. Anyway. So, my best friend moved to Colorado. Colorado Springs, which is beautiful, by the way. And she had this little new chihuahua that her cousin... Um, her cousin had babies, so she took him. And Mason, my godson, mm, you've heard me talk about him quite a bit. He is the one who I saw come to this earth, the only human, by the way. Mason named him Pinch because he was as little as a pinch. That's the cutest, right? So, I went to go visit my BFF, obviously. And she had this little guy. Now, I want you to stay open minded. I did not. At all like animals. My favorite animal was a horse, but I like to look at them. I was too afraid to ever get on one. I did once and that didn't go well. That's just to kind of give you a narrative of where I'm at. So he was super tiny. He was probably a couple of months old, maybe, maybe three. It was winter time. And so she was going to take me to these waterfalls. And we took Pinch with us. I think at the time she couldn't leave him because he'd cry. So we took Pinch along for the ride. This was so good. And we get out of the car and she puts him on the floor. And he's like moving his feet up and down. So I'm like, Claudia, I think the floor's too cold for him. And she's like, yeah, well, I can't leave him in the car. And so this was the first time I ever felt bad for the little rug rat. And that's what I thought he was. After time. Don't judge me. So I pick him up. I'm going to put him in my chest. Yes, okay? Yes, he fits. And I got my jacket and zipped him up. Nobody even knew that I had anything with me because he was tiny. And that's when we bonded for the first time. He just lay there. He was so still. He has these long, he's a deer type chihuahua. So he has these long little ears. And that's when we bonded. Now, a few months later, she came over to visit me. And she had to bring him. And at the time I was single, I wasn't married. I was living in my home by myself. And she brought Pitch. So I said, put him in the laundry room. I don't want I don't want hair all over my house. <laughs> Such a jerk, right? He's tiny, he's a little baby. Leave the little rug rat in the, in the laundry room. And he'd cry and cry and cry. And so she's like, well, can I just bring him in the house? Maybe it's too cold out there. So I'm like, yeah. I wasn't happy about it. Mm, mm, mm. What we did. 
And so we had him in the house. And his little kennel thing. And he just cried all night. Mind you. My best friend may tell you a different story. This is my story. My best friend can sleep. I'm telling you, and I've told you this before. She's seriously my, my father's daughter. I did not come out that way. I'm a super light sleeper. I hear everything. And my best friend is knocked out. I'm just more like... I'm tossing and turning. And finally, I let him out of his cage. I don't think he was in a cage. I don't know if we put a gate up, but he was somewhere where he couldn't get to us. So I let him in. He comes in my room. He had this little rug thing. Little bed. It was Elmo. It was an Elmo baby bed for four-legged babies. Mm, mm, mm. Um, I placed him in there. And he keeps going and crying and crying and crying. And finally, I get him on the bed. I put him under the blankets. And there's not a peep. Not one peep. I was like, this little mother sucker. So, that's how he got into my bed. He's never left since. Even being married. I've slept with that boy for all these years. He's my... He's my love. So my best friend, she leaves, she comes back. In order for him to stay in her apartment in Colorado, he has to be six months. And so she asked me to keep him. Reluctantly, I said yes. And that was history. It was her wedding weekend. She was getting married in Las Vegas. And that was the weekend I was going to return pinch to her. And I told her that I was in love with this little guy and I wanted to keep him. And she said, no, it's Mason's. I was heartbroken. Seriously, I was heartbroken. And my friend Teresa, just kept encouraging me that everything was going to be okay. <clears throat> and I was dying. I was so depressed, for real. So we get to the hotel. My best friend's so excited. The whole family's so excited. Mason, her husband, or her soon-to-be husband, they're all excited to see Pinch. And uh, they come into my room, and they're like talking to him, and he's all, you know, his little tail's happy, but he's kind of full of anxiety, like, what the heck is going on? Who are these people? Mason, he's so cute. He's full of joy because he's got his little doggy back. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Um. <clears throat> so good, you guys. So happy. So we take him out into the hallway. And they're running his room, their room and they're calling him when he won't go. And they're calling him and he won't go. So I walk into my room just so they can take him, you know, because I'm over it. I'm, my heart can't take anymore. And so they pick him up and they take him. 
and this was a miracle. After about an hour, my best friend calls me and she's like, hey, I need to talk to you. And she sounded really like something was all right. And I'm like, and she sounded like she was sniffling. And I'm like, are you okay? And she's like, no. And I'm like, oh my gosh, something happened. They're not gonna get married. That was my first thought. So my sadness was gone. Cause now I'm freaking out. They're my best friend. I'm already thinking like, I'll announce it at the wedding so that she doesn't have to go through that. I don't even know what's going on. And I'm already thinking like, something happened, <laughs> thinking about what to say to all the guests, why they're not getting married. I'm thinking she can move into my house. I have a three bedroom house, two baths, I live alone, right? <laughs> I'm crazy, you guys. <laughs> I'm already planning. One bedroom can be Mason's. I mean, just crazy. And that's in a matter of like two minutes because all she did was walk towards my, my room. And she comes back and her eyes are filled with tears and I'm like, baby, what's wrong? And she tells me, Pinch is no longer our dog. We're going to give him to you because he belongs to you. He's not ours anymore. He's been crying the whole time. Ugh. Okay, I told you guys I'm a crybaby. Those were the happiest words I think I've ever heard in my life. I was devastated. So when she told me that, it was like the skies opened up. And you're like, really? Over a dog? I'll tell you why later. So she told me that he belongs with me. And Mason cried a little bit, but he was so, he knew. He was young. How do you have that much wisdom? How did he know that I needed pinch more than he did as a child? God is crazy, man. He does all these things way before. He's in all the details before I ever even know. And at this point, it's May. March, April, May. So I'm only three months sober. And um, my best friend, she lets me keep him. And the rest is history. He's been mine ever since. So good. But let me tell you the God portion of this. I've told you guys a portion of this before. I, mean, I haven't told you the whole story, and this is it. I always struggled with loving people because I already had a lot of trust issues for whatever reason. Well, there was a lot of reasons, but I had trust issues like many people do. And, uh, you know, my love for people not for everybody, but for many, it was very conditional. And that was not good with my spirit. Even while drinking, it, was, it didn't sit well with my spirit. 
And one of the things that I believe that God brought Pinch into my life was to teach me about unconditional love, how to love unconditionally. Good days, bad days. And so slowly but surely, Pinch was teaching me without me knowing when I first got him, it was kind of like I didn't trust him. You're like, really, Mika? Yes, I'm telling you the truth. This is for real, for real. It's like I didn't like him. I didn't really want to be around him, you know. But I couldn't avoid him. He was like this little guy. He kind of depended on me. I had to buy him food and clean up his poo and train him. And... His personality is what made me fall in love with him. If he could speak, he'd be very soft-spoken and loving. I have another baby who's Lola. And she's super hyper and she looks really fast. She just looks like hardcore, you know. Him, he's very tender and looking. Just his look tells you a million things about him. His demeanor. Very slow to anger. Super chill. When I was sad, he'd come up to me and he'd lick me. I mean, he just, like, God put him in my life. I don't care if this sounds wacky. This is just me being me. And, um, God will use anybody or anything to get your attention, to soften your heart. I believe this. This is my experience. To soften your heart, and that's what he did with Pinch. My heart started softening. And I'm new in sobriety and life is overwhelming without a drink. And he just gives me this peace. And if I was in a good mood, he loved me. And if I was in a bad mood, he loved me. And if I was sad, he loved me. And if I was happy, he just loved me. And I used to take him to my meetings. Not all of them, but some of them. And everybody knew them. And I'm telling you that God used that little four-legged baby to help me recover from alcoholism. And that little boy has taught me so much about life about how to deal, about love and relationships. He has seen me at my darkest hour when most people have not. For real. I mean at my darkest hour. I won't go into detail about my darkest hour. And so, he's been my companion for the last 11 and a half years. And I love that little boy.
He has absolutely no doubt in my mind helped God save my life. So God set this whole thing up. My best friend's cousin's dog had to get pregnant so that this miracle could happen for me. And she had to go over there and see that the babies were there and grab one. And that baby boy had to move all the way to Colorado so that I can have that moment with him at the frozen waterfalls. Because at that point in my life, I was so detached. I was trying and struggling really badly to try and connect, but I was just so attacked, so detached. And my empathy is what got me to pick him up. And I didn't have a whole bunch at that time. To be quite honest. To be quite honest with you. So I believe that God used pinch to help save me. And here I am right here, right now, in this moment with you. Corny, but true. The end. This is on point. But before I leave, I'm going to introduce you to him. He's my most precious gift on this earth. He really is. Because I believe that God brought him to me. Mm -hmm. God knew what he was doing when he created those little babies. Man's best friend. That's why I can't understand how people hurt little animals like that. A mi gente. This is so good. But I'm full. I've got all this food here. But look, I did pretty darn good. That was a lot of food. Mm-hmm. Look at that. All that goodness. Anyway, my loves. Thank you for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed our chow chat and my lunch. I hope your lunch was as good as mine was, if not better. And for those of you who are like, ah, she's full of it, that's okay too. <laughs> I want to introduce you to my, my little baby. My little baby, Pinchy. Huh. He thinks he's a bird. 
I swear. <laughs> anyway, this is my little guy. I can't say he's my savior, but I can tell you that he helped God save me. And so I'm so thankful for this little precious being. And um, I want to get him to look over there. Look over there, Papa. Look over there. Look at his ears. Isn't he just the cutest little guy? He's the cutest little guy, huh? He's the cutest little boy in the world. Tell him. Tell him over there. Tell him you're the cutest little boy in the world. He's smelling all the food. He's like, ooh, mama. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Anyway. So I just want to thank you, mi gente, for, um, oh, okay, for loving me, allowing me in your homes. God bless you. And don't forget, you don't ever have to eat alone. You know easy with this. All right, family, until next time. Bye, family, Matt.